The Sanctus is the song of the angels and archangels. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. While the Benedictus is the acclamation immediately following. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We do not put words in the mouths of the angels. The Sanctus comes from Isaiah 6, when the prophet saw the Lord in the temple attended by angels. The words of the Sanctus were what he heard the angels singing. The clergy and some others bow during the Sanctus because the angels in Isaiah were said to have covered their faces in the presence of the Lord, a practice our bow reflects. Ringing bells in worship is an act that transcends denomination and even religion. The world over, the ringing of bells is done as an act of celebration. Over time, Sanctus bells were incorporated into the Eucharist as part of the celebration to create a joyful noise to the Lord, as it says in Psalm 98, verse 4. There are four points at which the Sanctus bells are rung when the Sanctus is sung, when the bread is elevated, when the wine is elevated, and at the great Amen. The bells mark these high points in celebration in the Eucharist service. It should also be noted that the ringing of the bells corresponds with the altar party bowing. This act of humility symbolizes the reality that the joyful experience of the Eucharist comes by God's grace alone and not any special power of the priest to conjure or cajole the blessing of Christ's presence in the bread and wine. When we come to the words, on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, the presider touches the bread and the wine. All of the bread and wine to be used is on the altar throughout the prayer. A sacrament always involves the grace of God, and it also involves a thing a created something, bread and wine at Eucharist, water at baptism. Sacraments are a place where the Spirit of God touches us in our physical being. The priest touches the bread and the wine as a sign that God's spiritual presence is poured into these real, tangible objects. And the priest who does that action while recalling the words of Christ is part of a succession going all the way back to Christ, ordained and consecrated by a bishop who is in a line of bishops reaching back to the apostles who were with Christ in an upper room in Jerusalem, sharing that last supper. The words body and blood can unintentionally call to mind ancient pagan rituals of sacrifice as action to appease an angry God. It is important to remember, however, that Christianity is the child of Judaism, not paganism. The metaphor of body represents a unique creation designed by God and the blood, the vitality given by God. At the Eucharist, in the body and blood of Christ, participants willingly seek Jesus' design and vitality in their lives. It is common at the end of the prayer for the presider to hold the bread and wine up together to elevate to God that which is God's. The bread and wine together in that way become among the most common symbols for the Eucharist. When the bread and wine are lifted up, the Sanctus bells are rung three times in recognition of Christ's presence in the body and blood. The people bow to show reverence to Christ. Fraction, like fracture, simply means break. After giving thanks, the priest breaks the consecrated bread. Breaking the bread is functional. Bread is broken so that it may be shared. But this is no longer mere bread. It is also now the body of Christ. In the history of the church, there has been some controversy over exactly what this means. In the Episcopal tradition, it means the real presence of Jesus. So the breaking of this bread may remind us of his real presence as a person who chose to die on the cross for the reconciliation of the world.
Communion is now shared with the congregation. Together, the bread and the wine are an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. The traditional definition of a sacrament. Everyone in attendance is encouraged and invited to receive communion by coming forward to the altar. The ushers will guide you. A priest or Eucharistic minister will give you a wafer of bread, placing it on your outstretched hands for you to eat. Then a priest or Eucharistic minister will give you the wine by offering you the chalice. It has been Christian practice to drink communion wine from this common cup, and you may do so by grasping the chalice at the bottom and tipping it up slowly. Though there are no recorded cases of any illness ever being spread through the common cup, we recognize that some may prefer not to drink from it for various reasons. You are welcome to receive the bread only and not the wine, or to have the minister dip your bread in the chalice and then place it on your tongue. This is called intinction. After you have received communion, you may return to your seat for quiet prayer and contemplation. Following communion, the altar is cleared in much the same way as you might clear your own table after dinner, removing the dishes and cloths and storing any leftovers. Leftover consecrated bread and wine are reverently stored away in the ombre or tabernacle and are available to carry to those who have not been able to attend the service in person. A lighted candle by the ombre or tabernacle signifies that there is reserved sacrament inside. Epiphany's ombre is located on the wall of the sanctuary to the right of the altar. The presider then leads everyone in saying the post-communion prayer. This prayer thanks God for the blessing of the Eucharist and acknowledges the life and power it gives to us to go out and be co-creators with God in the kingdom of God. At the conclusion of the closing procession is the dismissal, which formally closes the worship with a call for us to go as Christ's servants out into the world. It reminds us that the purpose of worship is not simply to encourage and build ourselves up, but for all of us to be empowered and sent forth as ministers of Christ. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Those are the words that we say right at the end of the service. We process out with the choir. I stand in the back and come back in and I stand here and I say go in peace to love and serve the Lord. It is both uh, a dismissal and a strong encouragement, but also tying together the reality that what happens in this sacred space through the work of the people, through the liturgy, is to build us up to go out and love and serve the Lord. And how do we do that? We do that by how we love and serve our neighbor. That is mission critical to what it means to be Christians. And so we come to this place and worship here through the service that Diane has uh, opened to our hearts through this series, punctuated, well, with a comma. And the comma is, go in peace to love and serve the Lord out into the world. And we turn and we go through these doors and we work our way through the power of Jesus Christ into the world. So now we come out into the world, right, with the noise and the, the busyness of creation. We come out as a people who are willing to do the work of living in the kingdom of God. One of the ways we here uh, within the walls of the parish seek to bolster your work in the world is through this perpetual learning, right? We call Epiphany a learning a church. And so we have filled our Epiphany YouTube site with uh, different ways in which you can learn and study. One is going back through the very extensive class we put together on all of the carvings and the windows and the symbolism that live with inside this sanctuary, right? To, to be in a place that is really a cauldron, a cradle, if you will, uh, of Christian history and visual uh, invitation 
uh, and then we take that and that builds up, right? Over time, the learning that we have through the work of the people, through the liturgy, through the study, through the prayers, through the community connection, and we take that and we go out into the world. And so I invite you to continue to plant deeply into the life of this learning church with the spiritual exercises that we teach here, and then go out there, right? And do what God has called you to do. Be at peace, do good works, and know that God loves you.